What day is it? Find out on Hands On. Five, four, three, two, one. It's back to basics on this 10th anniversary series of Hands On. Each show has a basic theme like patterns or letters, plus a basic how-to lesson on your favorite craft or craft material, like scrapbooking or clay or even wood. Each show also includes another basic, a painting lesson, from choosing paint to preparing your surface. At the end of the next 13 shows, you'll know everything about painting and be on your way to becoming an artist. So on each show, you can look forward to a basic theme, lots of projects, each with five steps and five ingredients. Keep basic supplies like scissors, markers, toothpicks, and rulers on hand. Remember, be creative and get back to basics with hands-on. You'll always know what day it is when you watch hands-on, especially today because we're making calendars. Calendars are a system of organizing units of time for the purpose of reckoning time over a period. Most are based on cycles of astronomy. Days based on the rotation of the Earth on its axis, the year based on the revolution of the Earth around the Sun, and the month based on the revolution of the Moon around the Earth. First up, we have a perpetual calendar. It can be adjusted whatever the day. Next, we've replaced our basic craft with an extended painting lesson with Prudy Veneer. We're talking about the basic tools and choosing the right paintbrush in lesson three of basic painting. Then it's a sun calendar that rotates to the correct day. And then it's equal time for the moon and a calendar of the moon phases, including a planting guide. We haven't got a day to spare, so let's get going. First, we're making a perpetual calendar. What that means is no matter what the month or day, you can turn the block to the correct date. So this is the third, this would be the 13th, and this would be the 23rd. And then the month, six months are on one block and six months are on the other block. Let me show you what you need to get started. First, we're going to start out with some heavy cardstock in red and white. We have a large rectangle of styrofoam, rub-on letters, some squeeze paints and rubber cement, and then our basic tools. We have a pencil, a plastic knife, a ruler, and some scissors. So let's get started. The first thing that we want to do is to cut and measure one and three quarter inch blocks out of the white cardstock. So I've already started measuring. As you can see here, this is one and three quarters this way and one and three quarters this way. Now I want to cut out 24 of these blocks. I'm just going to cut one right now, but I'm sure you can get the idea and we cut enough out of the entire sheet of paper. So I've cut some blocks here. The next thing I want to do is stencil. And I've chosen this stencil that has different shaped stars on it or different size stars. I'm going to take my pen or my uh, paint marker squeeze the paint into the bottom of the brush, then lay my stencil. Now it's really important when you're stenciling that you wipe off your excess paint on your palette or on a paper towel. You can always add more paint, but it's really hard to take away paint. So with just a pouncing motion, I want to take my brush and pounce down until I get enough color down. Lift that up, I've got one star, and I go and make as many stars as you'd like. And as I said, remember, always put too little paint, not because you can always take, um, add some, it's hard to take away. So I stencil six of the blocks with the smaller stars, and then I use the larger stars on six of the other blocks. I cap my pen. So let's move that to the side. Now our next step is we have a pattern for the cube that's going to go around our styrofoam. And I've laid this down on my red paper, and I'm going to trace it. You can also, you could add, uh, put a sheet of carbon paper between, behind it and trace that way as well. So I trace around the entire shape. When that's completed tracing, then I'm going to cut it out. And here's one that's totally been cut. So that's our shape, it's kind of a T shape. Now I want to lay this pattern again next to it so you can see that there are dotted lines. What I'd like to do is score on those dotted lines to make it easier to fold. So I've taken a plastic knife, I'm laying my ruler down and I'm just running my plastic knife along the edge of where I'd like it to be scored. So any place there's a dotted line, I'm adding those lines. I've got one completed here 
And now you can see it's so much easier to fold because I have score lines. So I'm going to fold this up into my cube shape, which is going to go around my styrofoam. And I've got that all folded up, and this is your basic shape. Now we glue that together as well. Let me move these to the side. Our next step would be cut our styrofoam. We used our plastic knife again to cut this shape out so that we have a styrofoam square. And I'm going to place this inside of my block. Then I'm going to take my rubber cement. Oops, I've got one right here. Put this down. And it's got a brush already in it. Put a little to this side and fold that down. And then come around and glue each piece. You're going to have to give that a couple seconds to dry. So I'm going to set that aside. A good way to do that is to put a rubber band around it to hold it in place. Got that one. I have one here, and now I've also started gluing on my squares. And I've got one more left to glue on the top. Now I got a little bit of excess glue there. So I'm going to just brush it off. And then I could take a scrap paper or a piece of paper towel and get that off. Okay, so now I've got my shapes all the way around. Now our last step is to add the months. So I'm going to do six with the months and uh, six of half of the months and then the other six are going to go on the second square. Now I'm using a rub-on letter. They come out of a pad here. You remove the backing sheet and lay them down. And then you're just going to rub with the craft stick that's inside. And as it starts to change color, you'll know that the plastic is lifting away. So we can lift it up by the corner. See if I can get underneath there and pull that away, and this would be NOV for November. So I do the 12 months of the year, and I've just done them on some scraps of paper. And then now for the days, I'm going to do one set with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now the second set is 0, 1, 2, 6, 7, 8. And the reason is, and you have to follow that pattern because you want to have the right numbers to make the right combinations. Once you have those on one of the blocks, we'll put the 1, 2, three, four, five, and six on the other side. So I have three here, which I could glue down. And then on the other blocks, we would add the months. So let's go back to the finished one so you can see it. There are the months, half on one and half on the other, and then the numbers on each of the bottom. So you always know what day it is. This lesson is about basic supplies, the things you'll need to get started in painting. Over here we have brush basins. They're water containers and they're made especially for painters. You'll notice they have a ridge in the bottom. Those help to keep your paint brushes clean when you scrape the paint out of them. There are several kinds available. Oil painters would use a covered jar because they don't use water, they use um, like an odorless turp. Acrylic painters or any kind of water-based painters use this kind. The next thing you need is palette paper or any kind of a palette for paint. I prefer a palette paper that's waxed and disposable. Some people like these bubble dishes. Other people use um, the old-fashioned wooden palettes. You'll need supplies for transferring patterns. We have a light graphite for dark surfaces, a dark graphite for light surfaces. Of course, you'll need tracing paper, maybe a little bit of tape, a pencil, and a stylus for tracing that pattern onto your wood piece. Other tools include um, soapstone or chalk pencil for a little fixing of the drawings on your piece, uh, palette knife for moving around paint, and of course, brushes, brushes, brushes. There's a brush for everything that you might need, any kind of effect, any kind of paint, and we'll talk about that later. Um, you'll need a brush holder, of course, some place to store your valuable tools and some brush cleaner. And I'll show you how to clean brushes later too. Those are our basic tools. There's, of course, more detailed stuff you can get, but anyone can get started with these. Let's make a sunshine calendar. First of all, the months of the year are around the outside edge. The days of the year are right here, or days of the month, and that just turns. And then the day of the week, Monday through Sunday, is here. So let's get started. Let me show you what you'll need. First, we've started with construction paper and we're using a heavy cardstock in white, yellows, and oranges. 
we have a glue pen, we have some paint markers, decorative edge scissors, and then I also have two brads. And then for our tools, we have our hole punch, pencil, ruler, and scissors. So let's get started. Okay, the first thing we want to do is to take our patterns. And I've got our patterns here, which are on the website. And then I've cut out each of the four patterns. And then the fifth pattern is the outside star. Then I'm going to lay that down on my colored paper. And on this one, I take the, I'm going to cut one out in orange and one out in tangerine. So I just trace around the shape. I won't take the time to do that here, and then I'll cut it out. So I've got one cut out already. Now you can see something different about the tangerine one. I've cut off one of these little triangles, and that's going to be so we can see the month of the year. So I've got the orange one, then I do the same with my other pieces. Now the only difference on the white ones though, I'm going to use decorative edge scissors. And let me show you how these work. You want to lay your scissor down and you can see it comes to the end. Then you want to line up your pattern again, line up the bumps like for example on this one that we're using that it's a wave edge and go around. So you'd cut out this one and then I have a different decorative edge scissor, a zigzag to go around this one. The last thing you want to do is to punch a hole in the center. You can use a hole punch or you can use the tip of your uh, scissor here just to poke through. I have a cutting mat underneath so that I won't poke into my finger. I'm also going to cut out these two, one, two little circles for the eyes and then I'm doing the same on yellow but I'm using regular scissors and see right here there's a little kind of kidney shape that I'm also going to cut out. So let's go to our next step. Now I have our orange, the two oranges and you can see one is cut off and I'm going to put a little outline around the edge and I'm going to take my black marker and just go around the edge of the sun. And I do the same thing on my tangerine. Then, let me turn it around so I can see, I'm going to write the abbreviation for each month of the year and go all around that edge. So we'll set that aside. Then the next thing is, is I want to do my circles. So I've taken my white circle and my yellow circle. Then I'm going to take my hole punch and I've punched a hole just in the yellow right here and that'll be one single hole. Now if you look through that, I'm going to write the days of the month. So I'll put a one and then all I have to do is turn it just a little bit, if you can see that, two. Let me turn it to you so you can see. I have a one and then a two and I go three, four and go all the way around so that my circle would be ready. Then I put a brad through the center by just poking it through and opening up the brad. Then the next thing I want to do is to take my other circle and on this one I'm going to write the days of the week. So in this little space, just like I did on the other one, I'd write Monday, then I'd turn it, write Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and all the way around. It's just very important that you put your brad through first so that it holds it in place and that you're spinning around as you go. And let me do it just one in pencil so you can see. So that's Monday, right there. Then I'll turn to here, write Tuesday, and I go all the way around. Now I've got my two circles ready. Now on this other circle, you can see I've added a little detail. You can take your red marker and kind of make this into a mouth, and you can write good morning sunshine or whatever you'd like, maybe even your name on the top. Now I've got these two ready to go. Let me pull all of my pieces in place. So I've got this on. I've glued on two little white circles and made a black dot in the center for eyes. Now both of these had brads on the back. I'm going to turn this one over and I'm going to open this brad back up. So it was bent down. I'm going to open this. Then I'm going to remove the brad from the second set. That was just there to hold it closed. I'm going to poke this through. And then I'm going to poke it through my two oranges. You just want to match up your holes and then spread your brad on the back and open that up. And now it's all set to work. So let's look at our finished one again. We know what month it is, what day of the week, and what date it is, all by one calendar. This lesson is all about brushes, a painter's most important tools. There are brushes for everything. There are brushes for different mediums and brushes for different effects. Look at all the brushes in this brush holder. We're going to talk a little bit about each kind. 
If you look at an oil painting, an oil painting is done on canvas, and oil paint is a very heavy medium. So oil painters use a stiffer brush to be able to move that paint around. Fabric painters use a little bit of a stiff brush too. You have to sort of grind that paint down into the texture of the um, apron. Watercolorists paint on paper, um, use water as a medium, of course, and so soft brushes are required to uh, carry that water over. Acrylic painters use a semi-soft synthetic brush most of the time. I'm going to use this little piece to show you all the different effects that are on one little piece and all the different um, brushes that it requires. If you look at this edge, you'll see the little stroke design that embellishes the sled runner. That is done with a round brush, a little bit of loose paint, paint that's thinned with water, and it goes all along this edge with a round brush. Can you see this shading? It's a dark blue against the light blue. That's done with a flat brush. It's loaded halfway into the brush and then dragged across here in order to get some shading. On the front of the piece, the snowman has a furry hat. The furry hat is done with what's called a deerfoot brush. Look at that funny shape. You load it into paint and then you apply the paint by pouncing. This brush is great for little bushes, for teddy bears, for furry looking hats. Um, I use it pretty often for this kind of effect and it's always done with pouncing. The liner brush is used for detail. If you can see the little lines in the carrot nose, the twinkle on the cheeks, it's done with a liner brush. With a liner brush you use very thin paint, you paint on the very tip and you get a fine fine line. Heavier liner brushes make heavier lines. The spattering the spattering all through the background, the snowy effect, it's done with a fan brush. The way that's done is the brush is loaded with thin white paint and then it's hit like this to get those spatters. A very nice effect. Um, there's all kinds of other brushes too for special effects. Over here, faux finish brushes. And right here, a mop brush. And this brush, I don't know if you can see the end of it, it's um, cut out so it makes sort of stripes with thinned paint. There are even children's brushes. They have a soft grip and the handles are colored uh, for the type of brush it is. Flat brushes are in red, round brushes are in green, angle brushes are in yellow easy for children to use and to learn all about a brush's functions. The most important thing to do with brushes, because they're very expensive tools, is to clean it properly. I'm using a special brush cleaner. You can put it in your hand or on a flat surface. And with the brush, you saturate the strokes, go back and forth until that brush cleaner is all the way up to the ferrule. The silver part is called the ferrule, and you want to get the paint out of that. Go back and forth, back and forth until it's thoroughly saturated with the brush cleaner. And you can feel that paint and see that paint work out of it. When you're finished, rinse it good. I'm using this water basin that's got ridges on the bottom that helps to get all that paint out. And then dry. When you dry, be sure that the brush bristles are back where they should be so that it dries flat. If you do have one that um, gets in your brush case and is bent over, hot water, just stick it under hot water, sometimes straightens those bristles out. Storage is just as important. If I'm working with a brush, I store it in my water container because it has holes in the edges. If I'm traveling with it or keep just storing it, I store my brushes in a brush holder for safekeeping. I like this one because the brushes all line up. The top can be flipped over, rolled up, and tied. If you take good care of your brushes, you'll have them for a long, long time. Our last project is a moon phase planting guide. All the phases of the moon are shown from the new moon 
second quarter, full moon, and last quarter, and then these are calendars for planting. Let me show you what you'll need. First, we have some different colors of construction paper, and I've used almost a heavy cardstock. I have some graphite paper, um, a glue stick. These are post, post hole uh, screws to uh, hold it all together. You usually use these in scrapbooking. And I have a clay pot, but we're going to use that at the very end. Then our basic tools are scissors, a ruler, some basic paint markers, and our uh, compass. So let's get started. The first thing that you're going to need to do is to look at our pattern, which is included on the website. What it does is it shows each of the phases of, of the moon and then tells information. The easiest thing to do would be to print these right off the computer. Um, if you don't have access to a computer, all of this information here is so you can, uh, it can write out by hand. So our next step is, is to take our four moons. Now each one of these moons is identical except for the way that the face is going. So on the full moon, we're going to do it in, or in, I'm sorry, in yellow and orange. In the last quarter, we're going to do the part that is showing in yellow and orange, but the part that doesn't in dark blue. In the second quarter, it will be the opposite way. So this will be dark, and this will be orange and yellow. And in the new moon, all of it will be dark and light blue. So the first thing I did is laid some graphite paper in between, and then I'm going to have to cut two for each one of the moons. So for this last quarter here, I'm going to cut one out of yellow, one out of orange, one out of dark blue, and one out of light blue. Then for the full moon here, I will do the same, but this one I only need orange and yellow, so I'll cut one of orange and yellow. So then uh, what I would do is trace around this onto the graphite paper, and I'm going to just draw one line so you can see. And if I lift that up, you can see that the mark has gone onto my paper underneath. I also, if you don't have these patterns, you can use a compass to draw this circle by putting this in the center and bringing your pencil around to draw your circles. Now I've traced these all out and now I'm going to cut them out. So I have an orange and yellow. Um, when you look at the pattern, you're just cutting a lot of, or four of each one. So I'm going to put those to the side because I have some laid out here. Okay, now this is the first one, which is our new moon, which means when the moon doesn't show. So we're going to do that in dark colors. So I did a dark one and a teal one, and now I've cut on that pattern, and I'm going to place this piece here. Then I'm going to cut all the little pieces out of this other piece so that I'm going to put the dark center in the eye and the light center in this eye and then the circles here and then lastly the mouth of the moon. So we have the whole face. When this is all assembled we glue this together with our glue stick and then I'm going to go over the other outline parts in a dark marker and I'm using just a paint marker. I can show you on one right here what we would do. And then put the center of the eye back in. And of course we glue these all down. Now if we move here to the second quarter this is the quarter that doesn't show. This is what you see in the moon at night. So this one is yellow. I've used orange and yellow accents here. And you can choose to eliminate some of these or just draw some of them with a line. But then this is going to be in dark. Then for the third phase, this is the full moon where you can see everything. So it would be yellow and I've added an orange accent. Remember, you could leave this all yellow too just to signify this is the total moon that you'd see. And then last here or the last quarter, this is the only part that doesn't show, and this part does show. So now we have our moons. Then the next step, earlier when we have the patterns, I told you to print those patterns out. And I've printed them out on green cardstock. And then I've trimmed each one of these. So I've cut eight of these with the calendar on it. And then I've done the rest with these, just with the four circles. Now I'm going to assemble those together. So I've got the first four, and then I have my calendars. And I'm going to take these faces that I've made and I'm going to glue them on. Oops, I just picked the wrong one. So the new moon will go on to this one and I glue each one of these together. Then when I'm all done, I'll take a hole punch, punch a hole at the bottom, reach over here and grab this um, screw mount and I'm going to put that through each one of the holes. Now let's take a look at the finished one. And you can see all the phases of the moon. You can see your planting calendars. 
And then right above it, you can see a clay pot, and we've taken that same design and painted it with markers. I've got new respect for the calendar. Can you imagine what would happen if we didn't have a way to get organized and plan for the future? And planning for tomorrow is what our next show is about. What do you want to wear? It all depends on the weather. And that's the theme of our next show. See you then on Hands On. Projects and ideas for today's show are available on the web at craftsforkids.com. This show is number 1003. Hands On is sponsored in part by Elmer's Products, Inc., manufacturers of a variety of adhesives, arts and crafts, and office products for use at home, school, or business for over 60 years. www.elmers.com. Thank you.